Taking the West diplomacy forward to ease the Ukraine conflict, French President Emmanuel Macron held talks with Russian President Vladimir Putin in Moscow that lasted for over five hours. Putin said that he was willing to find compromise on Ukraine after Emmanuel Macron made proposals of concrete security guarantees. Meanwhile, at the White House, meeting while the meeting with German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, Biden vowed to shut the Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline if Moscow launched an invasion on Ukraine. And for more on this fast-moving story, let's go across to our executive editor, Palki Sharma Upadhyay, who is joining us live from Kiev. Palki, thank you for joining us. Now, it's an intense week of diplomacy. President Putin showed willingness to reach a compromise on Ukraine after extensive talks with French President Emmanuel Macron. We know now that Macron is, is going to be in Kiev today as well. How do you reckon the talks will unfold going forward? Uh, uh, the French president has already praised uh, his Ukrainian counterpart and said that he is uh, showing immense self-control in the face of uh, uh, the Russian troop build-up. He said it's not easy for any leader uh, to maintain this kind of calm and control when uh, you have uh, more than 100,000 troops of another country lined up at your border. Uh, Having said that, uh, we'll have to see what Macron is able to deliver. Remember, he's the same man who uh, a couple of years back had said that NATO in Europe faces the prospect of brain death. Uh, from there uh, uh, to today, where Macron has become uh, the top negotiator for Europe and has taken the place of Angela Merkel, you could say, hmm. and he's been involved in hectic diplomacy. He's made at least three phone calls to U.S. President Biden in the last week and has spoken to President Putin multiple times before that meeting that we saw yesterday. Uh, and Putin's statement, very interesting while he said that he is open to uh, a compromise that suits all sides. Remember, this is the Russian president we're talking about, and he's also hmm. uh, made a sort of a veiled a nuclear threat, and he has said that while uh, NATO troops... Uh, and, and NATO forces may be bigger than Russia, but remember, Russia is the top nuclear power in the region. So Putin very much putting everything on the table, and this is going to be a test for the French president. Right, absolutely. There's also been a meet between German Chancellor Olaf Scholz and U.S. President Joe Biden. They appear to be on the same page with President Joe Biden also confirming that the United States will pull the plug on the Nord Stream 2 pipeline should Russia invade Ukraine. How do you assess that? Well, diplomacy is an interesting game. While they both kept saying that we are on the same page, while President Joe Biden said that uh, there was never any doubt about Germany's commitment and it remains a firm NATO ally, and he said that if Russia invades Ukraine, that will spell the end of Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline. And uh, Joe Biden, uh, uh, in a rhetorical flourish, even promised that mm. he will ensure that end. But remember, the German leader, Chancellor Olaf Scholz, did not commit to ending uh, Nord Stream 2. And uh, Germany has uh, throughout adopted a softer approach towards Russia. Germany did not allow a NATO ally to send uh, German-made howitzers to Ukraine. Germany has not committed the kind of troops that other allies have committed to the region. And Germany uh, came in for uh, a lot of criticism when it offered 5,000-odd helmets to the Ukrainians. So the German approach has been softer. And Olaf Scholz went all the way to Washington to just convey that he stands, uh, and, and Germany stands by all its NATO commitments at the same time not making any promises on Nord Stream 2. So while they say they're on the same page, uh, I would say uh, there is work to be done there. Absolutely, Palki. In fact, I was just going to come to that. German Chancellor has assured that the Allies will have a unified response to any escalation of conflict ahead of his visit to Moscow and Kiev next week. However, Germany has faced criticism, like you mentioned, for refusing to send weapons to Ukraine. How do you see this impacting efforts to de-escalate? Efforts to de-escalate will only begin once, uh, uh, once the Europeans, I believe, come with concrete proposals. Uh, uh, the Russian side is showing willin willingness to walk uh, uh, the, the half the way. But remember, the Ukrainians have also yesterday spelt out their red lines and they've said that we will not agree to certain things and we will determine our foreign policy. Uh, the, the, uh, the Russian president has said that uh, if... Ukraine tries to take Crimea militarily and joins the NATO, then the entire uh, Europe will be party to this war with Russia and there'll be no winners in, these war, uh, in this war. So de-escalation uh, uh, is, is, 
is not very much on the horizon at the moment. They are looking at finding uh, a common ground. At the same time, uh, statements uh, like the one that U.S. President uh, Donald Trump, uh, sorry, I'm sorry, Joe Biden made yesterday, uh, does not augur well and does not instill confidence. He said that uh, he would advise Americans uh, to leave Ukraine, and that shows how seriously America is assessing the situation and, and what they expect uh, it to develop into. All right. Palki, thank you so much for joining us with all your inputs on this. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.